Hello, everybody. Um, this is a video on the Bob Beck um, kit. A Bob Beck kit. That's pretty new. Yes, it is. Um, there's quite a bit of interest, and I've redesigned it uh, because I've actually had a couple of people either lose a pot or had a component failure, and I told them that I would go over their circuits and take a look and see what we could do. And this is what I ended up coming up with, a much simpler, much better, much more reliable circuit. Um, so, and I've gleaned all the information from my previous experience with the high-powered PEMF to help me um, um, to redesign this thing. It's very simple. Uh, the new prints are on the uh, website under Bob Beck. And... Uh, here we go. We're just going to do a real quick uh, presentation on this kit. So bringing this close, and, and as you can see, there's not very many components in here. Um, and it's very simple, and I have a pictorial that I've actually hand-drawn, and I put that as PDF on the, the web also. And I just finished cutting out a box for uh, an order, and here it is. Um, it's got uh, one square hole, two square rectangular hole, a um, hole for the uh, power cord. That particular switch uh, hole is for the uh, on-off switch. A hole for the pot, and a hole for the exit. Now, what I use uh, exit cord. What I use is a, uh, a standard um, extension cord, and I I cut off a length. As you can see, I cut off a length and that becomes my output to the coil and I use the rest of the extension cord as an input uh, from the power uh, source which is your uh, home outlet. This box takes about 20 minutes uh, probably about a half hour to uh, drill and file and it doesn't have to be precise these square holes uh, these switches these, these two mounting devices this is the uh, plug uh, for the light two prong and this is a simple on and off switch and they just simply pop in they simply pop in I was what I'm doing is I'm looking at the orientation I wanted to just duplicate my work so it's always the same so this switch just simply pops in hopefully if I did the hole right and there it is it's already mounted um, the grommet pops in and there it is not completely yeah, almost there it is already mounted got a grommet I already pre-mounted that one um, the pot pops in I'm not paying attention to the, where the video is here. And that just screws in. And I'm not going to put screw that in right this minute. And, and on this pot, there's a diac. You can see it. You can see it real well on the picture. I pre-soldered it onto the potentiometer. And if you look at the um, diagram, there's a schematic and there's also a... Um, uh, pictorial. I only use two wires. I use the center center tap of the potentiometer and then I use one leg and I just leave the other one open. Um, it's not really that important to do anything with. I just want a variable resistance resistance from 0 to 10k. I'm using a 1 watt. This is a 1 watt. I have a couple of 2 watts that I've been using. Um, that's it. Heat sink that I mount the SCR on, and this is an S6055R, um, um, a little bit smaller than the um, one that I did with the original uh, Beck, but just as reliable and can handle um, 60 amps peak. And we're not going to get there uh, anywhere near a 60 amp for a second out of this unit. And I think I just went over all the parts in the box. Very, very simple. Please look at the, um, the wiring diagram and the pictorial 
and see how simplistic this is to put together. And I'll, there's also a one page write up on what I'm calling the best uh, simplified uh, Bob Beck style PEMF on the web. All right, I'm going to stop this video and pick it up pick it up uh, with a little demonstration of, with the lights after I actually build another unit. Hello everybody, I'm back. Um, I just finished building the uh, kit and here it is. Extremely simple, took me about a half hour and um, I'm all done. I didn't mention a couple of things, I'm going to mention them now in the first part of this video. There was a hole that I didn't point out. That hole holds the heat sink. And that hole is going to get some glue put over it. Over it. So that uh, screw is a hot screw. And I don't mean hot in temperature wise. I mean that um, if you touch that and you touch earth ground, you will get a, a pulse shock. And we don't need to do that. And so I insulate that screw. And here is another unit. And you can see you can see the glue on there, and and that completely covers and insulates the uh, screw. And that glue is not coming off. Um, so I, I wanted to point that out. So when you finish your kit, make sure you do that. And then I do a couple of small tricks. Um, this switch does not have a, a light on it, and so what I do is I drill a small hole, not an actual hole, just a little concave area, and I. Mark it with a red felt uh, uh, permanent marker, uh, the, the hole. So when it's down, it's on. And when it's up, it's off. Down is on, up is off. Uh, gives you a good indication with just, just looking. And that's pretty much it. I don't think there's much else to tell you. I'm going to do a quick show and tell now. It, right now it is off. I turned it on and off, but nothing happened. I plugged in a coil, um, getting the coil so the camera can see it. I have this coil plugged in. This is one of my bi fillers. This coil has you know, about an ohm and a half uh, worth of resistance. I have other coils that have about an ohm. I've mentioned uh, I'm putting this coil out of the way so it doesn't. Uh, uh, interfere with any of my electrical equipment over here and pointing up in the air not at them uh, I guess that's it let's let's actually plug in 75 watt uh, black light bulb comes with the uh, PEMF PEMF both kit or the fully assembled version I'm plugging it in and I'm turning it on and right now I have the pot all the way down so it's got a rather long time delay uh, looks like a couple of seconds at least. And this is a 75 watt bulb, if I didn't mention it already, and I'll turn it up. And the faster it goes, uh, the weaker the pulse, uh, but the pulse is still very significant and um, has uh, application. So with this 75 watt uh, bulb, um, I'm going to guesstimate it's pulsing anywhere between 10 and 15 pulses per second. I don't really know for sure without uh, timing it. And I can time it either with a scope by putting a probe on it or um, I do have a frequency counter that I can also monitor the pulses. I want to show you that you control the power of this unit by the amount of watts that you use to drive uh, your lights, in this case uh, these lights, uh, there's 275 so that's 150 watts and if you have a 1 ohm coil um, you can go all easily all the way up to 200 watts without any problem if you have a 4 ohm coil um, the most you probably can go is 100 watts because what will happen, the cap will not uh, fully discharge before the next cycle comes around uh, to fire so the um, lower the resistance in your coil, the higher the wattage you can use. And this is 150 watts. Turn this on and I'm turning it up. And this will pulse faster. Um, this has got to be somewhere between 15 and 20 uh, pulses per second. Um, these lights are in series 
the wattage resistance is lower than in a low wattage bulb and hence the capacitor discharges much quicker. There's two things that control the discharge of the cap and that is the wattage of the bulb. The higher the wattage, the lower the bulb resistance is and the resistance within the coil itself. Okay, so we're doing about 15, 20 uh, pulses per second with 150 watts. You can um, easily go down to your hardware store and get a, um, a T so it splits one socket into two and screw two bulbs in. And the last bulb I can show you with this coil is a 200 water. And we'll turn this on, turn it all the way down. Okay, so um, the slow so you lose a, you lose control of the slow speed with respect to the higher wattages won't run as slow as the lower wattages, um, but they run faster. <laughs> okay, at any rate, this is running about one a second, and I can turn this up and blind my camera. Okay, so right now this is probably up around 25, um, between 20 and 25, I'll guess. And again, I could time this, but uh, I'm not going to bother right now. This is just a quick show and tell. So that's it. Um, I think I covered everything. Turn this off. Might be one thing I left off. I'm going to mention it now at the very end. Um, one cap, 1,500 microfarads. A um, lot easier to build because you only have one cap to work with. You don't have to have uh, a whole series of them. Um, this, this cap is rated at 250 volts. And it's, a, its temperature is rated at 105 degrees C. And believe me, nothing in here gets anywhere near that hot. Um, nothing gets really... Uh, the bulbs get hot, but nothing inside the circuit. Okay. Told you about the glue on the screw. Okay, I think I covered it. I'm going to wind this up. Okay, everybody have a nice day.